thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's good to be here again, and uh, I hope you're all locked down and, 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 and keeping well, you know. The lockdown is very, very important. We'll be talking about that much later. But in the meantime, I'm going to introduce my guest today, and she is a very accomplished one. I like people that, what do you, what's that word? Quiet storm. They have the strength of a storm, and they are quiet. She's a lady like that, man. I mean, she studied uh, biology at the uh, at uh, KNUSD, and she has traveled to uh, uh, Japan. She's traveled to UK. She's done work at Emory, the US, and it's all with biology and lab management and everything. She's outstanding, and we'll be talking more about her. But you know her. Even if you don't know her, you know the name. I'm sure in the, in the era of coronavirus, everybody, even at my office here, before you enter, there's what we call a Veronica bucket. What if you do that? <laughs> well, guess what? The, the brain behind Veronica bucket is here with us. Put your hands, show some love for Veronica Bequin. Unfortunately, you can't be so. I will thank you, thank you, thank you. Veronica, welcome to the show. Thank you, Kesem. Wow, awesome. good to have you here. Thank you. Glad and, to and be here. Before I go on, folks, uh, you see this beautiful aquarium that I'm always bragging about the serene atmosphere it creates. Well, she created this. If you've heard of Veronica Aquariums, this is Veronica. She was a long time. <laughs> and welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. And good to have you here. I'm happy to be here. And you've said it, your background is in biology. Yes. And, and yeah, give me a little bit about, you know, because I know you went to Noguchi and you studied uh, did some work on HIV screening. Yes, yes, You're a virologist. yes, yes, yes. Give me a I'm look. not a virologist. Okay. So let's start from the beginning. Uh, maybe after I graduated, I was employed by the Ministry of Health and posted to the Public Health and Reference Laboratory, okay. which was the, then the only public health laboratory for the whole country, mm. where they were dealing with the cholera, SADA, diarrheal diseases, mm. TBs, and so on and so forth. And uh, that was in 1972. But in 1986, on the advent of HIV, a few of us, about eight of us, were selected to be taught how to do the testing because a new okay. thing. Okay. And uh, we, we were then going to use uh, test kits uh, developed by Welcome Diagnosis of UK. So they send representatives down mm. uh, to take us through the training. Okay. Okay. Uh, I don't know whether fortunately or unfortunately, I was the only one stuck with the, the testing. Mm. So I had to go around for, to, tra uh, you know, to learn more about HIV. That was what took me to Noguchi sometimes because although I'm not a virologist, they offer training for the testing and mm -hmm. other mm -hmm. things concerning HIV. Mm -hmm. So since 1986, I concentrated mainly on HIV testing mm -hmm. and training of laboratory staff and other uh, healthcare workers mm -hmm. throughout the country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Did you get a chance after your training, were you exposed to some of these elements working with consulting and yes. other things? Right? Yes, yes, yeah. Uh, somewhere along the line I had uh, consultants to do consultancy for Family Health International to look at uh, infection prevention in selected clinics and maternity homes in the greater Accra region and also plan international Ghana mm. to work with traditional birth, birth attendants how they were controlling infection in their various homes mm -hmm. So um, it was because I had developed the Berenka bucket. So in the survey, I also saw the same situation, that uh, even in doctor's offices, bowls were being used. In labor wards, bowls were mm -hmm. being used. Same to what, yes, yeah. yes, yes. So I got the opportunity to introduce them to the Veronica bucket. And so those were, uh, they accepted it and introduce them to the uh, various uh, uh, hospitals and clinics mm -hmm. we're taking care of, including the traditional birth attendants. Mm -hmm. Anything you saw that, that struck you as, no, this is all, this must change? Yes, the fact that it, uh, in doctor's offices, 
labor wards after uh, everything when they didn't have running water yeah, they were using yeah. bowls you see and at best the bucket and things it, it, it was really sad so uh, i was able to introduce branch into mm -hmm. that area to, to help out there before it's uh, what started being used in clinics uh, sorry chop bars and things and apart that, from the yeah. hospital setting and the last per se i did it for the family health international uh, facilities mm -hmm. and also plan mm -hmm. international ghana mm -hmm. wow so um the, 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 let me get straight into it. The famous Veronica Bucket. Yeah, I think one the president was talking about precautions mm -hmm. one time in one of his speeches, he mentioned if we get yourself a Veronica yes, Bucket. Yes, I saw, I heard that, I saw that. Oh, you saw yeah, that? Yes. <laughs> How do you feel hearing the president well, talk about your... Very excited yeah. about it because if you are aware, I, I did this now almost 30 years ago. 30 years ago? Yes, during some projects. I was also involved in. Was it a specific project or? Yes, it was a specific yeah. project. Early 1992, USAID decided to help uh, Ghana to establish public health laboratories. So they sent down a consultant, a laboratory advisor mm -hmm. called um, Dr. Joan Hetrick. Mm. She passed about two years ago. May her soul rest in peace. And uh, I was selected by the head of the department to partner her to uh, do the project. And uh, she was new. She had never been to Ghana. Well, she was in Ghana way, way back mm -hmm. during her Peace Corps days when she was a young lady. Mm -hmm. So what so was the project about? About setting uh, establishment of four uh, <coughs> of public health laboratories oh, in the country. Okay. Because, like I said, where... I was employed. There was when I was employed. There was only one public health lab for the whole country, so they sent her down to see how the USAID could help establish uh, public health laboratories. And uh, so we had to do baseline studies, mm -hmm. and they realized that uh, there was almost nothing in existence. Mm -hmm. Initially, he, she wasn't supposed to put out buildings. But when she realized the situation on the ground, I think she was able to talk to them and convince them that we needed four public health laboratories to be built. And so currently, I don't know whether you are aware, we have four public health laboratories. The public health and reference laboratory at Kolibu, where mm. I used to work. Mm. Then there's one at uh, Koforidua to take care of eastern and water regions. Mm. There's one in Kumasi to take care of... Uh, Ashanti and Buran Hafu, mm. and there's one in Tamale, which takes care of Tamale, sorry, Northern, uh, Eastern, and Upper West. So, during the baseline studies, you know, the, apart from the construction of the, the, the public health lab, we had to do training for the lab personnel, how to manage these labs. Mm. So, we had to do baseline studies. And uh, during those studies, we realized that um, infection prevention in the labs was not the best. Something was being done, but it wasn't the best. S some didn't even have... Infection prevention being... Like, you know, we deal with clients or okay. with uh, presumably coming to us for a lab investigation, mm -hmm. and presumably they may be carrying some okay. Okay. form so of germ yeah. infection. So it, it was very necessary for the lab personnel to protect themselves as well as the clients. Mm -hmm. Because although we were the workers, we could also be carrying something. Mm -hmm. So the need, there was the need for a barrier. And how do we do that? Using personal protective equipment. Everybody's saying PPEs now. Yeah, PPEs, yeah. And uh, a major <clears throat> factor being proper hand washing, mm -hmm. which was a biggie. Because you know we, know we have a problem with running water pipe bone water in some of the facilities. And uh, we realized that the facilities, the laboratories, we didn't have running water from the taps. We're using basins, bowls of water to wash their hands. At best, you could see two bowls, one for washing and one for rinsing. Sometimes it's one bowl, a bucket, and a cup. 
So you take the cup, fetch the water, wash your... How do you, you know, wash properly? Sometimes it is only one bowl. And even if it's a one-man station, the water, the first time you put it in, is clean. You wash your hands so it becomes contaminated. And if you keep using the same yeah. water, yeah. are you decontaminating or Just contaminating? Okay. So after this, each, at the end of each day, we had to sit down and um, write a report or brainstorm as to the findings. And uh, during the, one of the discussions, um, you know, it, 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 we realized that it was a problem, the infection prevention, especially hand washing. I, I will say that seriously, it was a divine intervention. Mm. Because it just occurred to me, you know, at that time, the people who sell cocoa mm -hmm. porridge mm -hmm. have started using these aluminum containers which we see now. Mm -hmm. Formerly, they were just using ordinary containers or even earthenware pots for the cocoa. But then, around that time, they have started using these aluminum containers. Yeah. It just occurred to me that ah, if we fit a tap to this container, it could provide running water mm. for washing hands. Mm. And the lady quickly bought into it. She said, it's a good idea. Can you have one made? So I found somebody to make one for me. So we use that to go around the country to train the lab personnel to begin with, how to provide them with running water, running water. to wash their hands. So that was the beginning of the Veronica back then. And actually, she named it Veronica. She called it. <laughs> <laughs> <That's it. Wow. laughs> uh -huh. Because I came up with the concept. Uh -huh. Ideas like that just, just drop him. I, that was why I said I'm sure it was a divine mm -hmm. intervention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I was wondering how, under the circumstances, how, how could we yeah. convince... And the, and the was that they were using bowls and it was contaminated. Contaminated. Just washing our yes, hands. The same yes, 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 yes. Or like I said, at best a bucket, a bowl, and a cup. Mm. So unless there's, there was somebody around to fetch the water for you, yeah, you have to, yeah. fought, I mean. Wow. So then came Veronica Bucket. Yes. Wow. And, and amazingly, uh, because of, unfortunately, uh, this coronavirus thing, it has come back full bloom. Mm -hmm. I'm sure when you're entering those offices, you saw Yes, I, I, I even bucket. used yours. You even used it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, Veronica was that they show some love. <laughs> but, but um, um, and I was, thinking, I was talking to uh, the director of this program one time because I, when I was telling him that we're going to get you as a guest, mm -hmm. that he goes, wow, that you must be reloaded because everybody is using it now. Did you benefit financially or anything? No. No? No, no, no. I did not. Um, the... the objective was to keep my people like the la la laboratory Laborative personnel safe. and the health sector at large safe mm. from getting infection or giving infection to our clients. So the motive wasn't money. to make money, but I attempted to patent it, but I was frustrated at Registrar General and I gave up. So, no, it's, so it's not even, no, 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 so, so, no, no. And uh, seriously, I haven't made any money out of it. No. Wow. I, I know that in initially you had this, this idea, let, let me protect our laboratory assistants, you know. And so with that, I can, I can see the feeling that, no, I'm not in this for money. I just want to save my, mm -hmm. my, my lab technicians. Mm -hmm. But now that it is big and people are making, I was listening to somebody on the phone ordering like, I think 400,000 buckets, and I'm thinking, oh, some residual, nothing like that. No. What frustration do you get through, get to, uh, go through trying to have a pattern? You know, the bureaucracy, uh, and it, every time you go, they, something new will come up. Mm. They give you this form, you feel you go back, and I don't know whether it was deliberate or not. Wow. And 
honestly, when I was in active service, I didn't have time to be, you know, fully around oh. because I had to do my work and then go home, take care of my families. So I just gave up on it. Wow. Do you wish you had followed up? No matter yes, what the Yes, I do. Was? I do. You know, this has been over 30, about 30 years ago, and it's been quiet. I've been quiet. But what is happening now, I think, I, I regret that uh, I didn't patent it. But it's okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Makes me, I'm very, very proud of what you've done. And at the same time, I feel sort of sad that, you know, um, well, this is our nation. We don't respect things like this. This no. is intellectual copyright. This is creativity. This is coming up with amazing things that humanity is benefiting from. And the, and the creator has nothing to do with whatever returns that come from it. That, that I think, is quite sad. Well, what can man do? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, anyway. I, I don't know. Maybe all these companies that are... Well, I don't know. If, if, if it's not too late and it's possible to do something about it, I, I will surely like to, to make the effort yeah. to maybe get a bit of control. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that would be awesome. That would be awesome. Mm -hmm. Now, all you uh, uh, copyright but lawyers that are listening, uh, mm -hmm. please feel free to give a call. And please, somebody step up and something must happen. Thank You've you. done very well, by the way. Thank Congratulations. you very much. Congratulations. Ensure some love. <laughs> And you don't do this. Let's quickly talk about other things that you do now. Because you, you. Uh, yes. This is your, your mm -hmm. work, Verica Aquariums. Yes. How did you get into but, aquariums? Well, well, when I retired, I didn't have much to do. So this is your retirement gig? I think so. Before <laughs> then, about some, some three or four years before. Uh, it's my son who manages it. Okay. He Cecil? came up with the idea. Yes, okay. Cecil. Okay. The idea that he could, he could do it. I said, why not? Let's invest it in Let's it see. and let's start. So that was how we started the Veronica's Aquariums. Mm -hmm. I own it, but he manages it. Okay. And uh, currently we have branched into other things. We do kitchenettes. We do kitchenettes. Kitchenettes and uh, wardrobes. Wow. Yes, so the brand name is, of course, Veronica. Veronica. Where, how did you get the idea to go into kitchenettes and, and the aquariums? Well, it, it, well, it, it was... Uh, Cecil's idea that okay. is it possible to branch into something else? I okay. said, come up with something and I'll buy into it. So that was it. Oh, so he came up with it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Cecil, if you're watching, I'm sure you are. You're a good guy, man. Cecil, he's a great guy. He's a great Thank guy. Thank you. He's Thank awesome. you very much. I call him all weird times. My fish don't have food. They don't have... <laughs> then he'll send people right away. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Show some love, man. Take a look at the few. Uh, shots of the kitchen she's developing, including the aquariums. Let's take a second and take a look at this. Uh, folks, you saw the kitchenettes, you've seen the aquarium. At least, just out of love, say, okay, when you have a your aquariums, your kitchenettes, they will support you. Is there any number they can reach you at? Oh, yes. Yeah. My uh, MTN number 0244 okay. 37 3431. Okay. And the number is on your screen now 0244 37 3431. 37 I see on your screen. Call it now. And just don't call and say, oh, congratulations for the bucket, you know. <laughs> Buy something. Let's support her. She's done great. And I don't know, I was saying, if there's any lawyers who would like to call the same number, maybe somebody can get on board and at least... I hope so. Yeah, I hope do so. something. Mm -hmm. Because it's the biggest selling thing yes, in Ghana yes. now. Now, you know, initially I, it was meant for the health sector. Now it's being used everywhere, even before uh, COVID-19. Oh, okay. bars, restaurants homes everywhere. everywhere to provide running water because you know we have issues with the 
pipe bond water in several places. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much for honoring us, you know, to, coming, to come on our show to talk about it. You know, I think um, people are now watching. They go, oh, hey, what more? Oh, you know, because it's a very, 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 it's a small thing that you did. Exactly. But it's turned out to be so big. Mm -hmm. And if you're listening to many motivational speakers who talk about how to make money, the one thing they all talk about is that create something that meets a need for society. Yes. You know, from simple from simple things. things. So long as it meets a need for society, you will make you plenty make, yeah. money. So okay. I, I'm not happy that you haven't made the plenty money. Well, uh, but who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Yes. But we wish you the best. Thank you very one much. More, one more, one more. Yes. Congratulations. And thank, thank you. For being thank you for the opportunity. It was a pleasure. Stick around, folks. We'll be right back. <laughs>